Hey my dolls, thanks for watching today. I'm so excited about this video. I hope that you guys enjoy it as much as I enjoyed filming it. Today we're going to be trying out or comparing dupes. One side of my face I'm going to be putting on fancy pantsy, expensive as makeup and on the other side of my face I'm going to be using more affordable products, products that you can find mostly at the drugstore and we're going to compare them side by side. But yeah, I hope that you guys enjoy this video. It's not a unique video. I've seen many of videos like this and I always wanted to do it. So here I am finally. I want to see exactly the products that I compare, the dupes and the high end. Then just keep on watching. We're going to start off by priming the face. I am going to be using the Maybelline Master Prime Face Primer on the cheaper side or the affordable side. And on the very expensive side, we're going to be using the Makeup Forever Step 1 Skin Equalizer. And that's what they look like. In my opinion, they're pretty much the same. they both very hydrating. They make my foundation go in super smooth. And I really, really enjoy the two of them. To correct my under eyes, I'm going to be comparing the Erase Paste by Benefit on the expensive side. That is a correcting concealer. And I'm going to be comparing that with a one that I actually created myself. I have a video on it in case you're interested, but this is just like an orangey type of salmon type color corrector for your under eyes. So that is the cheapest that you can get if you're able to use the products that you already have Oops. to create um, a corrector. I actually have one by NYX that is excellent as well, but I have it in one of my purses and I can't find it right now. But I mean, you can't get cheaper than that. The one that I made, as you can see this side right here, is a little bit more salmon-y. I just made it that way because I feel that it covers a little bit more. I do love this erased paste. However, I wish it had a more variety when it comes to the colors. They only have, I use it in the tone deep and this is the deepest it gets. Like it, it covers pretty well. But for somebody, if you were darker than me, I don't think it would do the job. For foundation, we're going to be comparing these two. I'm going to be using on the inexpensive side, the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation in the tone Caramel. On the expensive and high-end side, I'm gonna be using Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation, and I am in the tone 128 or Y415. I'm gonna be comparing these two because they have a very similar finish, like they're not super matte, they're not super dewy, they go with pretty much any skin type. Also very similar in that they photograph beautifully, and we're going in Instagram style with the high-end foundation. And for that, I'm gonna be using the top portion of the Beauty Blender just so that I don't mix both foundations. I think I really like the undertone of the Wet n Wild a little bit more. I like it's a little bit more golden, more me. The undertone of the Makeup Forever, it's a little bit more like on the neutral, more ashy type side. The formula, as you guys can see, like the coverage is pretty much the same. Like it feels the same, pretty good. Pretty close now match. To prepare my lids for eyeshadow, I'm going to be comparing these two. I should put it like this. I'm going to be comparing the NYX eyeshadow base and the tone. Uh, what tone is this? I think it's oh skin tone, which looks like that. And then uh, right on the other eye, I'm going to be using Soap Ochre Paint Pot from Mac which if you compare side by side, they look pretty much identical. However, I do prefer the MAC one. I kind of feel like it makes your eyeshadow last a little bit longer and it blends easier. I don't know if that's just me, but today we're gonna see it in action side by side. I've never actually tried them side by side. If you are on a budget, this is definitely a great option as well. I always like to set my eye base with a matte eyeshadow in like a cream tone, or it can just be a face powder, similar to your skin tone. On this side, the inexpensive side, I'm gonna be using the Maybelline expert wear eyeshadow in the tone champagne freeze and on the expensive side I'm gonna be taking my Mac eyeshadow palette It's the 15 warm neutral and I'm gonna be taking this tone right here which is pretty similar to the tone uh, hey Next, I'm going to be taking this definer color from this Wet n Wild palette called the Naked Truth. It's the one that says definer right here. For the expensive side, I'm gonna be taking Dance in the Dark and I'm gonna be mixing it with Saddle, 
oops, <laughs> down here. Why did I touch the shadow directly? Um, I'm not going in directly just with dense in the dark because I'm, uh, I'm a little just scared that it's not going to blend just as nicely. Blending. Just keep blending, blending, blending. To deepen up the crease a little bit more, I'm going to be taking this Ipsy NYX little palette. And I'm taking this color right here, which is kind of like a black, but it's not really, really black. The brush that I'm using is the E36 from Sigma. The same brush, I'm going in directly to this one again, the same one that we used before, but I'm also going to be mixing it with a black one from Nastasia Beverly Hills just because I don't want to go in straight with black because the other one wasn't like really, really black and I want to be fair. They kind of look the same, they're not so off. I did get a little bit of fallout with the dark NYX shadow and I didn't get any with the MAC and the um, Anastasia but pretty good eyeshadow if you ask me. Anyways, a lot of high-end brands have fallout anyway so that's not something that would really stop me from using an eyeshadow. And now for the crease, I'm not quite sure what am I going to use. I have a couple of dupes that I wanted to show you. I have this palette here. This is from Wet n Wild. It's the Comfort Zone. It is a very popular palette and I am so impressed with it. The pigmentation on this palette is unreal and I was comparing the shadows to see what I had that was similar to it. And some of the shadows are very similar to the ones on the Manny MUA palette and Makeup Geek. This palette is inexpensive as well, like it's not super high end. Makeup Geek is a little bit more affordable than like MAC and other brands out there. But it's still a little bit expensive. The palette I believe is 45 when you compare to this one which is like four or five dollars what caught my eye like you see this shadow right here if you compare that one i mean on my finger wet and wild this is makeup geek you guys tell me these are not identical it's unreal how much they look alike maybe maybe the one by makeup geek is a hint a little bit more opaque but other than that it's like it's amazing. It's amazing how they compare, but I don't want to use like a dark eyeshadow today. I'm looking for something a little bit more, I don't know, less dark. <laughs> Um, but these are definitely something that I wanted to show you guys and how impressive similar they are. Compare this one also. Clean finger. just a demonstration so you, that you guys can see that the quality of this palette is amazing if you don't have it you need to buy it if you're on a budget you need to buy it the lid i'm going to be using is those this one right here it's one of the eye studio by maybelline and it's in the tone give me gold um, it's an amazing beautiful palette the pigmentation is awesome For the expensive eye i'm going to be using this one right here from mac which is in the tone amber lights which is a beautiful color as well For the inner corners of the eyes, I'm taking this one right here for the inexpensive side from the Wet n Wild palette. And I'm also going to be applying that to the brow bone. And then for the expensive side, I'm going to be taking this one right here. And believe it or not, I only had to dip in once into the Wet n Wild. And for the MAC, I had to put it a couple of times which is not necessarily a bad thing but just so you guys know for gel liner we're gonna be using brown for the inexpensive side I'm gonna be using Maybelline eye studio in the tone brown brun which is this right here for the expensive side I'm gonna be using Laura Mercier cream eyeliner in the tone espresso And there you have it the Laura Mercier one is a little bit more opaque also like not opaque I, they actually have like similar pigmentation it's just a little bit more espresso like the name says it but if you ask me the one from Maybelline is amazing as well it's super creamy for concealer on the expensive side I'm going to be using my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer which I love and I'm obsessed with so this is a tough competition for me <laughs> and on the inexpensive side we have the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Concealer the Tarte one I use it in the tone 10 and the one by Wet n Wild yes it's medium I found it 
It's kind of funny. <laughs> and why not? With my shape tape. One thing that I can say is the shape tape is a little easier to blend than, than the one by wet and wild. Maybe it's just that the one by wet and wild dries out faster. Not quite sure. Honestly, I don't see much of a difference between one or the other when it comes to coverage. I don't know, you guys let me know what you think. I see the creasing is the same. Like it's Oh my god, I didn't think the one by wet and wild was that good to be honest. Like I was I don't know. But you guys let me know. Let me set it and see what happens. But for now, I'm actually very impressed. I see no difference. No difference. So to set the under eye on the inexpensive side, I'm gonna be baking with the RCMA no color powder. And on the expensive side, I'm gonna be using the Laura Mercier which is a secret brightening powder that it's um, mainly for like the under eye area. So let's compare them and see them side by side. Laura Mercier. All right, so now let's move on with contour. We go back to the eyes in a little bit. So to contour, I'm gonna be using the NYX Highlight and Contour Palette to do the inexpensive side. I'm gonna be using this one right here to bronze. This color really bronzes me very nicely. For the expensive side to contour, I'm gonna go in to my Shade and Light palette from Kat Von D and I'm gonna be grabbing the shade in the middle which is more like a bronzy tone. So now we're pretty much done with the face. I'm going back into the eyes really quickly. I keep it very simple. I'm gonna go in it to the definer shade. I'm going to be applying that using a E20 brush, which is a shorter shader brush from Sigma. And I'm just gonna be smudging that out on the inexpensive side. For the expensive side, we're going back in into Dark Brew. For mascara, Scandalize by Rimmel on the inexpensive side. For the expensive side, I'm going to be using the Full Exposure from Smashbox. And uh, to tell you the truth, I think I like more the one by Rimmel. Even though the other one is as good, it's a nice brush, but I think I like this one more. What do you guys think? On the expensive side, the blush, I'm going to be using Peaches from MAC, which is one of my favorites and has been for a very long time. It broke, so I can't really show it that well, but I have this one here from... City Color uh, B Matte Blush Little Palette and I'm gonna be using the color Guava right here which is very, very similar to Peaches. For highlight, my favorite part, on the inexpensive side, I'm gonna be using the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder in the tone Precious Metal and on the expensive side, I'm gonna be using the Ultra Definition, Extra Definition um, Skin Finish highlighter from mac in the tone beaming blush which i love 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 did a little swatch today and they're kind of like in the same uh, family type of highlights beaming blush is definitely a little bit more golden it also has like that pinky undertone a little bit to it that is the comparison next to each other the pigmentation is there for both they both blinding they're beautiful and amazing yes they're a little bit different they're not identical but they do the job On the lower lip, I'm gonna be using the inexpensive one. So I'm using ColourPop in the tone More Better, MAC Retro Matte Liquid Lipstick in Old Lady. All right, and there you have it. They're not really identical. It looks like I have an ombre lip going on, but um, I mean, in the same family, and uh, honestly, you can buy three for the price that you get one from MAC. 
and in my opinion I like the formula of the ColourPop a little bit better than I do the MAC that is it that is the finished result I so my camera died so I decided to just you know do something to my hair while it was charging and here I am and I am back and uh, what do I have to say I mean I am super impressed to see the performance of products against each other I knew all the products that I tried were pretty good or most of them amazing but I honestly never I had never compared them to like the actual high ends that were that they were dupes for this was really really fun to do and really fun to try out so please let me know if you guys want to see anything similar I was thinking maybe just the one like uh, finding more dupes and just showing you guys uh, like swatches instead of just showing you on uh, my face so you guys let me know if you will be interested in seeing that in uh I don't think I have anything else to say. Bye, mis amores. Thank you for watching, and I see you next time. Pesos. <laughs>